hello welcome to my channel i really appreciate you watching this video i hope this video blesses you i hope this video truly truly um gives you a word of knowledge there's a reason why you're watching this video so i i, I pray that the lord uses me to truly um you know be a soldier for his kingdom and to inspire you i don't know i just hope the lord uses me because after what i saw last night it's about to get real and um i'd like to start off by saying that honestly i did i did ask the lord to see visions i asked the lord to give me dreams i asked the lord to um give me spiritual knowledge to open up my spiritual eyes um and um to you know open up my spiritual ears because i was really blind i was truly truly caught up in the devil's snare for so long so you know like when you become you know born again and you have this fire for jesus you just you want him so 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 badly you know and i feel like that's exactly the time when the enemy is going to work so hard against you so the last six seven months have been a whirlwind in my life. I have never had so many dreams, visions, um, um, word of knowledge from God, you know, conversations with my husband about like what's happening on a spiritual plane. Um, I was supposed to make this video, well, videos like this um, months ago that I told myself, oh, I'm gonna, you know, start a YouTube. It's gonna be focused on God. It's gonna be focused on Jesus. And I slacked, I completely slacked. So I don't want to, you know, waste any time. I just want to get straight to it. So um, the first vision that I distinctively remember seeing, uh, I believe this was before April. I didn't. I don't have a date about um, about this vision, but it was a a vision of a red horse, and this horse was beautiful. It was just. It was literally a red horse. It it was it was red, and then its mane was also a deeper red. And um, I remember it's it didn't have like hair, like it was more like I guess spiritual hair, like it was uh, kind of suspended, and I couldn't see it moving, and I could not see the rider of, of this horse. And um, I remember my husband and I, of course, anytime we both get a dream or a vision, we always go to our Bible to see what the Bible says because honestly, we don't care about our own opinions about what this could have meant or, you know, what God was trying to say to us, you know, and let it be clouded by our emotions. We rather understand what the Bible says. So I remember it was, um, there was, a verse about it about a red horse in revelation and i'm definitely going to add it to this video um the next vision this was when my vision started to get really vivid um was about okay it was about <laughs> so anyway it was um august 27 2020 i woke up and um i was laying in bed i honestly i wasn't thinking about much it was still pretty early and I think I was trying to go back to bed um, and I was laying down, I closed my eyes and um, I went into this vision and I remember I was suspended in the air, I was somewhere in the air and I looked down and I could see the earth or like the, the land underneath me and it was completely destroyed. It was, I re distinctively remember thinking like, this looks like a nuclear spillage, like, there there was destruction there was i couldn't see houses rivers oceans nothing nada it was everything was just destroyed and i was um you know kind of confused and so i just like started to look around and i remember i started off on my left hand side and from at, at wherever my eye can see nothing but destruction basically um and then as i'm looking towards my right I see this being start to um, float, basically. It wasn't walking, it was floating, I guess. And it was a woman and she had grayish, greenish skin. She, I remember looking at her face, she looked so angry. She looked so angry. And um, like, I just felt the hatred as she was walking, uh, excuse me, gliding past me. And she had this kind of crown like the best description I could think is like a diadem, you know? 
And as she got closer to me, uh, I got a word of knowledge that this is Jazabel. And I'm feeling so much resistance <laughs> um, that this is Jazabel. And um, Jazabel, you know, she is the mother of false prophets. She, you know, historically, the person um, killed hundreds of God's true prophets and she was um, married to a king, um, a Jewish king, and she was br basically bringing destruction onto the Jewish people. She thought that, that's what, you know, the devil plays her to do. And um, I know if you guys remember the book, uh, you know, Elijah prophesied about what was going to happen, about her death and everything. But anyway, um, as she's gliding, I look up above her and there is fire fire coming out of this <laughs> coming out of the sky and i remember the fire was it didn't quite hit the earth but it was just it looked like it was about to you know and it also reminded me i also saw i saw like fire balls and then i saw something that kind of looked like um lightning but it was red you know like fire lightning uh, um behind her as you know she's gliding towards me and a little bit more to my right I see this this shield and I it was a shield or a breastplate um I remember what a, um I think it was a the the breastplate of faith or the shield of faith I just want to kind of like I, I I feel bad for Russian about this vision because it was very important and I just never said anything about this but anyway um and I remember, you know, I didn't feel afraid. I, I knew I was in a vision. I was mostly confused, like, what am I looking at? And every time I looked at something, I basically kind of, like, got a word of knowledge. Like, when I looked down, I was like, oh, this is the, this is the earth. You know, Jezebel, fire in the sky, you know, destruction. Um, kind of basically told me there are so many false prophets out here. <laughs> and um, that's another video for another day. But anyway... So, at, you know, once the vision, once I started to think to myself in this vision, like, is this the end of the world? The vision stopped. And I opened up my eyes, still in bed, and I was confused, of course. And um, I closed my eyes again. And this time it's dark. I'm, I'm in a place surrounded by darkness. And um, in, within the darkness, I seen, I saw this... Um, there's, honestly, there's only one way to describe it, and that's a beast. I really, I really don't know what else to say. Um, and it was, it was black. I remember it had fangs. It had big, um, like yellowish eyes. It the, the only animal that I could definitely distinctly tell that this beast was mixed mixed with was a, a bear. You know, like it just reminded me of a really, you know, twisted um, animal. This, this animal does not exist. You know, this is not God's creation. It was definitely a beast, you know. So once I saw that and I guess like it, it like I, it, it looked at me, I opened up my eyes because I was kind of shocked. I wasn't expecting any of those visions. Um, and then I woke up my husband and I told him what happened. And so after that, you know, I said, I'm going to start writing these visions down. Um, so the next vision that I re distinctly uh, remember seeing was in July 30th, 2020. Um, my husband and I, we were, we were, we were finished, we finished watching a movie, laying in bed and, um, <laughs> And, you know, sometimes we just get like, you know, I'm trying to be obedient, you know. So um, I've come to realize that when God speaks to you, he tells you basic things like pray fast, read the Bible. You know, you, you know, like it's, you know, it's God, basically, because I've come to learn like the devil wouldn't tell me to do those things because all those things get you closer to, you know, our our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Um, but so. Yeah, I got this word, like, um, you know, to pray in tongues. So I told my husband, oh, yeah, let's pray in tongues. 
and um, we were praying in tongues, praying in tongues, maybe about two to three minutes later, um, I saw, once again, I was suspended in the air. That's, that's the best way I can describe it. I was watching something that was coming and underneath me was clouds, were clouds. And, uh, you know, it was kind of like a box of clouds, basically. And I distinctively remember that the clouds were purplish in color. And it wasn't that the clouds was purplish. It was the being that was within the clouds that was like a very dark purple. And I remember looking at it, you know, and even within the vision, I felt my, like I was squinting my eyes to try to get a clearer, you know, visualization of like, what is that? And, um, and, um, it almost looked like an angel, you know, like, I guess like that's what my, uh, my mind naturally went to was that this is, this is some type of angel, but I already got the feeling that it's not a good angel. You know what I mean? Um, it was, it, it was beautiful. You know, it was, I don't remember the colors of the angel, but I remember purple. I remember that color and I was, you know, anytime I see anything, I'm trying to distinct, um, distinguish if it's good or bad or, you know, what is, what's happening. Um, I usually have to research about like, what does this vision mean afterwards, you know, or the Holy Spirit will kind of like guide me as I'm in the vision. So this time around, I didn't hear anything from the Holy Spirit, but I was looking at this thing and it was at first in a crouched position. So I couldn't see its eyes, its face. And then it started to like lift his, his head. Um, and I also realized that it's a male, um, as I was watching it, not that it looked like a man, but like, that was the one thing that I did know. And it started to like lift his head. And I remember looking and, you know, like I felt like I was kind of gliding towards it, but once it like lifted his head, I, I kind I stopped. I knew that this thing was evil. It was, it was evil. And, um, I remember the feeling of like thinking like, wow, this thing is so beautiful. And then going from very beautiful to, to very evil very quickly. Um, and after praying about it, I uh, we realized that it was the Antichrist. It's so crazy to me that I'm talking about these things, honestly. I thought that if I ever had a YouTube video, it would be about like makeup. Like this is how I know that this is not me this is you know the holy spirit is really trying to work he's trying to get his message out so please bear with me um i i have never seen things like this in my life ever and then within the last couple of months i started to see all these things so please bear with me as i'm trying to explain but anyway okay so anyway um yeah and i remember you know it opened up as it opened up i saw the wings and so i knew okay this is some type of angelic figure but it was it was demonic it was it was demonic and it scared it scared me i knew i always know like i'm in bed i don't get confused that like you know i'm like i know it's a vision but it still scared me and of course you know i told my husband he's like you're gonna make a video and i did nothing with that anyway um Last week, I wasn't even doing anything um, in the bedroom, sitting down. I closed my eyes. I think this was after just praying, you know, a normal prayer. And I saw this uh, river of blood. And I remember, I, just, I remember it coming from my right-hand side. And I'm looking at it. And I, I don't know if you've seen, you know, blood. Like, I don't know. I'm a nurse. I've seen, I've, you know, been up close and personal with blood, you know, with packed red blood cells, basically. And when blood is like in that bag, it's very dark because, you know, that's that's how blood looks. But because this blood was in a river, it was it was definitely less deep. But you like like less deep of a red color. But you knew that this was blood basically. And I didn't know what it meant. I just saw that vision and I opened up my eyes. So I was like, what does, what does this, what does this mean? You know? Um, and of course we went to the Bible and we got the understanding. Yeah, those were all the old visions. So now I want to talk about what I saw last night, <sighs> the dream that I had last night. It's not even a long 
dream, like the meaning of the dream. Whew. Fell asleep as normal. To be honest with you, my husband and I, if we go to sleep, especially at the same time, we pray together, you know, we pray, we, you know, we bind, you know, um, any strong man. We do, you know, all of those type of spiritual warfare prayers. And we always try to end our prayer with, Father, please send us dreams, send us vision, send us, and send us understanding. Um, because honestly, my husband, you know, also has been getting lots of like dreams and, um, you know, so we are definitely getting what we were basically we're praying for. Um, but anyway, this one I, I did not expect. So I'm dreaming. The first half of the dream, I do not remember. Mind you, when I wake up from any dream that I know that this is from God, I record it. So even when I listen to the recording, I still don't remember the first half of the dream. I don't remember it. And um, I remember there was people there, something, something. I don't know. But basically, the dream starts when, I mean, what I do remember is I walked out of a building or a house. I walked outside. And when I, wherever I was, it was not a place that was familiar to me. I, I don't know where I was, but I felt safe. You know, the only, it's weird because the only thing I could think of, like, it was like kind of like a, a city, you know, um, and I'm walking and within like a couple of seconds, you know, I'm looking around, I see trees, I see houses. It's a beautiful day. Um, the only thing I don't ever, I don't remember seeing was um, other people. So all of a sudden, you know, I look up into the sky and I see this, these clouds, these clouds, um, they're gray. It almost looks like a storm is coming. That was the first thing I was like, oh, is that, is that, is that, is there, I can't even speak. Ay, ay, ay. Whew. Is there a storm coming? And then I look closer and I realize that ain't no storm. Um, the best description I could say is that there was the son of man was in the clouds and he wasn't facing me. He was, um, if I'm, you know, looking this way, he was going that way. And once I realized that this was Jesus Christ in the cloud, the son of man was in the clouds, in the clouds, you know, fear gripped me and I started I started repenting. I literally was saying the same thing. Jesus, I repent. Jesus, I repent. Jesus, I repent. You know, several things happened simultaneously. The first thing I remember thinking was, I gotta go tell my husband, you know? But I don't, I wanna keep my eye on Jesus. So I'm like slowly kind of walking backwards, but I'm so amazed. I remember my eyes were like, you know, they were huge and I, I, I was not blinking. I wanted to just focus on Jesus. I was like, oh, it's time, it is time, he's, he's here, you know? Um, and uh, I wanted to focus on Jesus and uh, Holy Spirit told me, when the Son of Man comes, everybody's gonna know. Like, <laughs> you don't have to go and tell your husband, everybody's going to know. I don't know how, but we're all going to know. It's not that we are not, nobody's going to miss this. You know, when Jesus first came, you know, he came as a lamb. He was born in Galilee. I even distinctively remember, <laughs> remember I was reading the gospel of John and um, I forgot who said this. He was like, when they were basically saying the Messiah is here, um, the person said, can anything good come from Galilee? You know, like, Jesus's beginnings were very humble, you know, and um, he came as a servant. He came to the Jews and they rejected him. And he was crucified on the cross. I don't know why I'm getting so emotional. He was crucified on the cross and um, he shed his blood for all of us, for all of us, he, you know, all of us heathens who did not deserve him. He shed his blood for us. And, you know, with his wounds, with his stripes, we are healed, you know, and when you believe in Jesus, you are saved with faith alone, you know. You are redeemed for all your sins, all of your dirty, dirty, dirty sins, <laughs> you know, and um, through grace alone. <sighs> 
there is nothing, nothing that you, you can do to gain salvation except for going through Jesus Christ. That's it. You know, there's not, no amount of works. Matter of fact, I told myself I, I wanted to uh, read this a little bit. Um, yet we know that a person is not justified by works of the law, but through faith in Jesus Christ. So we also have believed in Jesus Christ in order to be justified, justified by faith in Christ and not by works of the law. Because by works of the law, no one will be justified. You know? Um, for I am not ashamed of the gospel. For it is the power of God for salvation to everyone who believes. To the Jew first and also to the Greek. For in it, the righteousness of God is revealed from faith. For faith, as it is written, the righteous shall live by faith. Um, but anyway, whoo, anyway, so, um, back to the dream. Oh, yeah, yeah. So, yes, Jesus is coming, and uh, <laughs> and as I'm walking backwards, I start to feel this pressure, and the only like this pressure is start, it, it was. It was making me fold into myself because I told you I didn't want to lose my eyes. You know, I did not want to lose focus on Jesus. But as soon as that pressure started hit, like I started to fold within myself and I started to realize like I was naked. I was naked. As soon as I saw the cloud, as soon as I saw Jesus, I was naked. Even though I left whatever building I was in fully clothed, all of a sudden I, I feel naked. It's weird because I felt like spiritually naked um anyway so as i'm folding into myself like i couldn't i couldn't handle the the glory of god i could not handle the glory of of jesus christ the king i could not i could not stand his presence he was nowhere near me he was all the way up in the sky i mean all i saw was the cloud in him and roll and robes and his like kind of like his profile and his like his back like i knew it was jesus i didn't see any distinctive you know face or anything um and if you've ever you know moved in the spirit the spirit is is an interest is a totally different <laughs> i i guess i have to say a different world you know you have this knowledge without even um anybody opening up their mouth you just know these things you know and um I would like to say that the, this, the difference between when I saw like that antichrist spirit, I was next, I, I don't want to say next to him, but I was in the clouds with him. I could tolerate its presence, you know, I can, I could tolerate his presence. He, he, you know, scared me, but there was no pressure. The pressure that I felt, I was on the ground walking in my dream but that pressure that the glory of jesus i could not i could not handle that is like true basically true 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 glory excuse me Whew. anyway so um eventually like the pressure is honestly what woke me up i i could not handle the pressure even in the dream and i woke up and i remember I, I was thinking you know jesus i repent jesus i repent jesus i repent and so I picked up my phone and I recorded it really quickly. Um, I looked at the time, it was 4.15. And I was like, shocked, basically. And I, I felt so convicted, you know? And so today I knew, I have, I mean, today it's, it's Labor Day. It's uh, September the 7th, uh, 2020. It's probably around like 6.30 or something in new york city okay and this is where i am all right i'm making this video because of the conviction that i felt about jesus coming and i was completely naked i was naked because of my sins i was not clothed in the robes of righteousness basically you know the the robes that i i'm assuming that the the, the christians you know the the sons and daughter and daughters of of um the living god will feel when he comes i didn't have it on you know, in the last five months, six, seven months, I have been moving in the spirit. I have been praying. I have been binding spirits. I have been um, 
delivering people. Like I have been trying to move, but I realized the one thing that I I have not done, the one sin that I have truly like let just slide was um, disobedience. Was disobedience. You know, I was I was still in rebellion. I was still in rebellion to God because I asked God for these visions, these dreams, and you know, for one reason and one reason only to basically tell his children. And I'm just over here sitting on all of these visions. And this one I knew, I knew, I, I knew that if I, if I didn't tell people that when the day comes and, and I am sitting, excuse me, laying by the throne because there's no way I will be standing, this is the sin that God will show me, you know, and I don't, I don't want to be a part, you know, the fear that I felt when I saw Jesus, I just didn't want to be, <laughs> I did not want to be left behind. You know, I wasn't thinking about money. I wasn't thinking about um, my job. I wasn't thinking about, honestly, I did think about my husband at least, you know, um, but I didn't think about anything materialistic, the things that, you know, I, I've been striving for. I was, you know, looking for a house the other day, um, you know, doing things for myself, basically. But when <laughs> when Jesus comes, none of that matters. Nothing, none of the things that you think matter. Okay, All, the only feeling that you're going to feel as a child of God is that, please, Lord, do not leave me. You know, and that is the feeling that anytime I think about it, it, it literally makes me cry. I was crying all morning. I was crying all morning because I was convicted, as well as um, also feeling like if, when Jesus comes, you know, like, Somebody like me, who I honestly thought that I would be saved, I'd be, you know, raptured and all this stuff. That was not the feeling that I had. You know, I had the feeling of being left behind. I had the feeling of being, you know, I had the feeling of being naked and sh and ashamed, you know. And I, I repent every, every night before I go to bed. I repent, you know. But with me, I realized that, you know, when you ask God for these gifts, you know, you have you have to use these gifts to glorify his name. You know, you have to because that was I'm telling you, that was one sin that God if I when I <clears throat> woo! Mm -mm. anyway. This Bible has my name on it. Um <laughs> You know, I also like to say, you know, Christians, don't stop praying for your friends and your family and your loved ones. You know, keep praying for them because the time I got this Bible, I was a heathen. It was over 10 years ago. And my best friend at the time, ironically, her name is Angel. Um, she, she had a, a beautiful relationship with God and I love the clubs, you know, and I love to drink. And for my 20 seconds, I think birthday, 21st or 22nd birthday, she gave me two Bibles embroidered with my name. And it took me 10 years to open, okay? So don't stop praying for your friends and family. You know, Jesus will save them eventually. <laughs> I just hope that it happens so. Um, so yes, uh, let's go to Revelation chapter 13, sorry, chapter 14, verse 13. I looked and there before me was a white cloud and seated on the cloud was one like a son of man with a crown of gold on his head and a sharp sickle in his hand. Then another angel came out of the temple and called in a loud voice to him who was sitting on the cloud, take your sickle and reap because the time to reap has come and the harvest of the earth is ripe. So he who was seated on the cloud, swung his sickle over the earth, and the earth was harvested. I just want to go to the bottom. And it says, um, this is an image of judgment. Christ is separating the faithful from the unfaithful, like a farmer harvesting his crops. Um, I would also like to go to, it was Revelation. 3.14. And this is um, 
to the church in Laodicea. These are the words of the Amen, the faithful and true witness, the rulers of God's creation. I know your deeds, that you are neither cold nor hot. I wish you were either one or the other. So because you are lukewarm, neither hot nor cold, I am about to spit you out of my mouth. You say I am rich, I have acquired wealth, and do not need a thing. But you do not realize that you are wretched, pitiful, poor, blind, and naked. <laughs> Mind you, <laughs> when I say that I was convicted, oh my goodness. I counsel you to buy from me gold refined in the fire so that you can become rich and white clothes to wear so you can cover your shameful nakedness and solve to put your eyes on your eyes so you can see. To those whom I love, I rebuke and discipline. So be earnest and repent. Here I am, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come in and eat with that person and they with me. To the one who is victorious, I will give the right to sit with me on my throne, just as I was victorious and sat down with my father on his throne. Whoever has ears, let them hear what the Spirit says to the church. Amen, amen, amen. Woo! <laughs> um, He's coming. He's coming so soon. I was, I, the last time that I saw a dream like this, it was when, um, I think in my old video, I, 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 well, I, I talked about it. Um, I had a dream that my dad died and um, I, you know, long story short, I, I woke up basically crying and um, I hadn't spoke to him in a very long time and I called him and we made up. I was like, yeah, no, I knew that that was God's grace. God gave me that, that um, he, he was so graceful to me because I was so rebellious. I was so angry at my dad. And um, I called and I literally re repented. I, I said, I'm sorry. I told him I loved him. I hadn't spoken to him in maybe about two years, um, of course, because of pride. And, um, it reminds me of what's happening right now because about five or six months later my i ended up it basically everything in that dream ended up happening and uh you know i i was ashamed not because of you know i was happy that i at least you know made up with him but i was kind of sad that i didn't tell my siblings you know about this dream and this is what i think about about this dream i gotta tell everybody i have to i have to i literally took a nap this afternoon and i could barely sleep and i put an alarm clock so that i could wake up and not you know oversleep and when the alarm clock um you know woke me up i was shaking i was like it's like i have like this this anxiety not from you know the vision or anything but this this kind of um need to share what i saw because I do not want God to judge me for not telling the truth, you know, when the truth has been coming to me in visions and dreams and I have been laying on it, you know, and I hope that I can expand on these other visions. But this last one was the, this is the one that I knew. I, I have to tell my fellow, you know, sisters and brothers all over the world. I pray that, you know, we open up our spiritual eyes. We, we stop being lukewarm, you know, because he will spit you out. You know, you want those white robes. <laughs> you want those white robes when the, when the son of man comes in the clouds. You want those robes because feeling naked and afraid is a feeling you don't want to ever feel. And worst is that feeling of being left behind, especially when you know that you are the child of God. You know, you know that you want him. You want him. You crave him. You know, so don't just um, sit there and think that once you're saved, that that's it. Man, honestly, I have been praying, fasting, moving in the spirit. And it, I don't want to say like, you know, you need to do work, work, work. But I'm saying like when God is telling you to do something and you don't do it, that's rebellion against God. And 
he will judge you for that. So that's what I'm talking about, you know? We are saved through faith alone by his grace. But I, what I'm what I'm trying to, to say in this video is that Jesus is coming and anything that you need to do, it doesn't matter. It doesn't, it doesn't matter about, you know, the cars, the homes, you know, this relationship, that relationship. Get right with God. Pray, pray that he shows you what you need to do, you know, because honestly, I, I thought I was good. I'm not gonna lie to you. I thought like I'm doing I'm doing much better than I was in the cult, you know? So and so um but I, I've come to realize that at that moment I was naked. And uh I hope this video blesses you. Um I I'm gonna try to edit it as fast as I can and put it out as fast as I can. Um because apparently he's coming sooner than we think and Honestly, I've even been praying the Lord's Prayer, you know, that kingdom come, that kingdom come, that will be done, you know, but not understanding that I needed to fix some things. And by his grace and mercy, he has shown me what I needed to do. So God willing, I will, I will try to break down those other visions a lot more, um, especially the one about Jezebel and uh, the Antichrist. Um, break it down a little bit better, but this last one is Anyway, honestly, I already feel a lot better. I really I really I already feel a lot better I hope my husband can edit this as fast as possible. I would just like to um, to end with prayer um, <laughs> Heavenly Father, thank you so much for getting for, for getting me through this video. Lord, thank you for guiding me. <laughs> Heavenly Father, I ask you to bless anybody who's watching this video. May they open up their eyes. May they understand that you really are coming and you're coming soon, Father. May they may they repent. May they be um, washed in the blood of Jesus Christ, Father. May they be born again. Lord, I ask you to allow them to accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and as their Lord and Savior and let him carry the burdens of anxiety, depression, anger, resentment, rebellion, Father. May you deliver them from any demons that they are carrying, Father, any demons who are oppressing them or possessing them, Father. I ask that you use this tool to um, to spread the gospel, Father, please use it, use it, use it as you will, Father. And I ask you to bless everybody who's watching this video in Jesus' name. Um, and I would just like to say also, please continue to pray for your your um, your friends and family, especially your Christian friends and family, your atheist friends and family. Trust me, everybody needs Jesus because when the time comes, there's no questions. There's no questions, you know. So pray because it took... 10, 10, um, 10 plus years of prayer, you know, for me to truly open up this Bible. Mind you, I got two of them. This is the other one. I, and who would have known that 10 years later that this was going to be the best gift that I ever received in my life, ever. I look at them. They're so beautiful. I open it up. Uh, turns out... <laughs> I thought that they were old King James Bible, so I never opened it. And when I finally opened it, they were study Bibles. That's why they were so big. <laughs> so, um, you know, just because a person is lost does not mean that they will always be lost. Okay, so don't just disregard them and say, oh, they'll never change. Don't curse them, you know, like just pray for them. Pray for your, your family. Pray for your enemies. Um, we all need salvation. We all need Jesus Christ. We we all need him. So I hope that this this um, video does what it needs to do. And uh, stay blessed. Amen.